for Surrey Life, BBC Surrey. On a lighter note now, around 160 children in Woking have spent the week learning about different world cultures. The youngsters, aged between 2 and 14, at the International School of London have been finding out about each other's traditions, foods and languages. Susan Stewart is head of Mother Tongue at that school and she joins me on the line now. I don't think I've ever spoken to somebody with that title before. Good evening to you. <laughs> Good evening. Head of Mother Tongue, what does that mean? Good. Well, mother tongue is a, another name for a home language. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but what, what are you doing your day job? Are you teaching your languages? Yes. Well, we do something quite unique at uh, the International School of Surrey, which is we teach every child who walks through the door uh, his or her mother tongue, which oh. means that uh, um, whenever we get a new child, we examine what language they speak at home. And if we don't have a teacher to teach that language, we go out and find the teacher. Um, so at the moment, we have 12 different languages offered. Um, Arabic, Dutch, French, German, Hungarian, Italian, Japanese, Mandarin, Russian, Spanish, Turkish. Um, and children on a, on a daily basis have lessons in those, uh, in those languages. Right. And uh, though you're called the International School of London, I mean, you are based in Surrey. Where, where are your students typically coming from then? Really all over the world. Um, really from the four corners of the earth. We have uh, traditionally a, a big Dutch population. Uh, as we were previously a Dutch school, about 30% of our school is Dutch. Um, we have um, a large uh, Kazakh and Russian population, but apart from that, really um, from all over. We have um, students who, who live here on a permanent basis. We have students who are here, you know, on, on relatively short-term basis. Mm. Um, and tell us about what you've been up to this week, then. Well, this week we decided to, um, to spend time celebrating uh, the, the diversity we have within our language departments um, within the school uh, environment. Uh, it coincides with the United Na Nations uh, International Languages Day, which is celebrated uh, next week. So we decided to, uh, to change the timetable and, and put all the children of every language together for the week um, so that they could get a, an opportunity to get more, maybe more of a sense of, of a community. Um, and they spent also time sort of looking beyond what they normally do within class and also finding how they were connected maybe with other language groups within the school, mm. uh, both in terms of maybe cultural celebrations, but also, you know, words that had maybe been transferred between the languages. Um, we found, for instance, the Hungarians found that they were linked uh, in a little way to Turk, Turkish. Um, the, uh, the Spanish and the Italians and the French found that actually when they talked slowly, they could understand quite a lot of each other's uh, language. It's quite interesting. There was a report that we covered uh, not so long ago about the fact that, uh, that, that there's a call for more people to learn uh, foreign languages, particularly perhaps steering away from the likes of French and German and, and going with uh, the likes of Mandarin instead. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, of course, our students come with the language. And, uh, and so what typically happens in, 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 in many schools is, you know, students come into a school and they, are, they, they have to become somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, they have to become... British or English, um, English speaking, what we do is we say to them, keep that, and then we'll add English, and then, and then we actually do add an additional language. So many of our students actually um, study three languages by the time they're in middle school. And presumably they're highly marketable by the time they go into the world of work. Exactly. You know, ma many schools say that they, they are, you know, they have in their mission statements, they're preparing their students for the future. Well, we, we looked at that and said, well, what is the one thing we can do to definitely prepare themselves for the future? And, you know, what, one thing is have a, have a child who's bilingual or trilingual, as many of our students are. Um, they can go everywhere. Just a final thought. I mean, you, you, your students are aged two upwards. What age is a good age to start learning a foreign language? Uh, our students all take a language from the age three. Age uh, three? Yeah. And they, and they can, because, I mean, going back to when I was at school, which was a long time ago now, we, we never started languages, uh, any, anything other than uh, the English language, effectively, until the age of 11. I know nowadays things have moved on quite a bit. Do, do you sense, then, that to the younger children start the better? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, they, they have a, a, a greater, let's say, flexibility in, in hearing sounds and producing sounds, um, not to mention, you know, less inhibitions. Um, so they, they, and they maybe analyse things less, so it's, it's a lot more of a natural process, let's say, than when you start later on. All right, well, very interesting speech. I'm glad the week has gone well. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Au revoir. Uh, Susan Stewart there is head of Mother Tongue at the school, and I think au revoir is about the best you're going to get from me. 14.